Our lesson this week, it starts us into the second unit of lessons for this quarter, with the second unit of lessons for this quarter being titled Daniel's Faithful Prophetic Ministry. Our lesson today comes from the selected scripture from the seventh chapter of Daniel, starting at the ninth verse and goes through the 14th verse. It is a lesson that is titled Daniel Prophecies the Son of Man. Something that we should remember before we even dive into the scripture of our lesson this week is that Daniel and his friends, because of their faith, which we saw in the first lesson of this quarter, because of their faith, the Lord, he gave them rewards. The Lord, he rewarded them with knowledge and understanding in all literature and in all wisdom. Daniel, we should remember, he received a specific, a more specific reward that, that he already has put to use, which we see in the second chapter of Daniel to where, again, the Lord had rewarded him with a gift of being able to understand and being able to interpret dreams and visions. In the second chapter of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar, he was having dreams and visions of this image that he had that nobody could interpret. But Daniel, he was able to interpret the dream that, that Nebuchadnezzar was having. Again, that interpretation coming from the Lord. So here in our lesson this week, we see where Daniel, he has his own dream. He has his own vision that comes to him by way of the Lord. And Daniel, he is going to share what he saw in his vision. He's going to share it with all of us. It is a vision that it calls to mind a Sunday school lesson that we had earlier this year to where we were taking a look at scripture in the fourth and in the fifth chapter of the book of the Revelation of Christ. It was a lesson that was titled, The Lamb is Worthy. So something that I would highly suggest all of you would do is after you are done watching or listening to this lesson today, go and check out that lesson. And I would also encourage all of you as well to dive into the full commentary of our lesson this week because there is a whole lot of information, a lot more information that I share in, in my full commentary on the website that I won't be able to share in the shorter videos that I do here the shorter audio that you will also be listening to as well. So certainly go and check all of those things out. Now, let us go ahead. Let us dive into our Sunday school lesson here today, where our lesson, it opens up there in the ninth verse with Daniel in a vision. He says that he's seen the ancient of days. Who is the ancient of days? That's a question that that we certainly need to answer. Daniel, he actually gives us a description of the Ancient of Days. He tells us that the Ancient of Days was seated on a throne. He tells us that the Ancient of Days was wearing a garment, a garment that was white as snow. He even tells us about the Ancient of Days hair. He tells us that his hair was pure like wool. The Ancient of Days sitting on the throne, he tells us, was a throne that was a fiery flame. Now. That description for all of you Bible readers, you Bible scholars, that description, it should sound very familiar to you. If you were to turn over to the book of the Revelation of Christ and you were to take a look at the first chapter, which again, I highly suggest that you do, you see beginning at the 12th verse and going through the 14th verse there, that there is a description there of Christ in his glory that nearly matches word for word the description here that Daniel uses to describe the ancient of days. In that scripture, in the first chapter of the Revelation of Christ, we are told that in his glory, Christ was in the midst of seven lampstands. He, he appears wearing a garment. And John, in his vision, John said that Christ, that garment that he wore, it went down to his feet, his hair, John said, was like wool, and his eyes, John said, were like a flame of fire. So it's very clear that Daniel in, in his vision that he was not, he was not seeing a, a mere mortal, right? He, he wasn't looking at a, at a human being, right? He wasn't looking at, at flesh and blood. Daniel, he was seeing someone who again was holy, someone who was righteous, someone who was full of glory when he was taking a look at the ancient of days. I would also point out that this fiery flame that's, that's coming forth from, from his throne, this fire, it, it represents judgment. So the ancient of days, it shows us here that Daniel is seeing someone who is not only full of, of holiness and righteousness and glory, 
but he's also full of judgment as well because the flame, the fire, it always, when we take a look at scripture, it always focuses in on judgment. Think about it. When we go before the judgment seat of Christ, our works will be tested by the fire. That's what Paul said in his writing. And so we should understand again, the Ancient of Days is someone who is full of judgment. Well, we'll take a look there at the 10th verse again. Daniel, he gives us more descriptions of, of what he's seeing there in his vision. Daniel said there in the 10th verse that he saw thousands and thousands ministering to the Ancient of Days as he sat on the throne. Daniel tells us there, 10,000 times 10,000 he saw, a great multitude, if you will. He saw them standing before the throne, the court. Daniel said it was open. And Daniel, he tells us there that the books were open. What is this all about? Here's where we take a look at the fifth chapter of the book of the Revelation of Christ, where again, this calls to mind what we saw in that Sunday school lesson earlier this year, which is why, again, I suggest that you go and take a look at the lesson after you are done watching this or listening to this lesson. And again, why I suggest that you go and take a look at the commentary as well. Over in the fifth chapter of Revelation, when you take a look at the opening of that fifth chapter, John said that he saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll, John said. It was then asked, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? When you take a look at the sixth and the seventh verse in that chapter of Revelation, we'll see there in that scripture that moving in the midst of the throne room, John said he saw that there stood a lamb as though it had been slain. The lamb, John saw, came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. So in that vision, the one that was already sitting on the throne that John saw, that would have been the father. The lamb, of course, the lamb that was slain, of course, that's Jesus Christ. He is our propitiation, right? He is the lamb that shed blood to, to cover our sins, to uh, make atonement for our sins. So if we cross reference what we see in the book of the Revelation of Christ with what we are going over here in our Sunday school lesson here today with Daniel, we could, we could see that the Ancient of Days that's sitting on the throne is not Christ, but it is the Father who is appearing there in all of his glory in full sovereignty, overlooking everything, okay? So when we take a look at the 11th verse there, we'll see that Daniel, he's still, he's still seeing everything that's going on, still taking a look at everything that's going on, we know, in, in the throne room. Because again, we know that the Ancient of Days was sitting on his throne, right? The Father is sitting on his throne. What is going on? What is taking place? Daniel, he tells us there in the 11th verse, as he continued to keep watching his vision there, he said that he watched because of the sound of the pompous words, which the horn, Daniel said, was speaking. Who is Daniel talking about now? Who is sharing these pompous words? Who is this horn that Daniel is talking about? Now in scripture that is, again, outside of our lesson for today, at the start of the seventh chapter of Daniel, Daniel, he shared another vision that he had had, a vision that was about four beasts. The four beasts, they, they all represented different times. They represented different kingdoms as well. Now, again, I go over that vision. I go over it in greater detail in, in the full commentary of, of this week's lesson. So again, hop over to newfoundfaith.org and, and go over the full commentary if you would like to have a fuller understanding of what took place in that vision. Now, I'm going to reference the, the seventh and the eighth verse here because those are of, of more importance here for, for the lesson here to where, again, in the seventh and the eighth verse, Daniel, he said that in the vision that he had about the four beasts, he said that the fourth beast was the most terrible beast uh, of the kingdoms there, those four beasts. It was exceedingly strong. Daniel tells us that the fourth beast had huge iron teeth which devoured and destroyed essentially everything that was in his way. Daniel, he also tells us there in that scripture that the fourth beast had 10 horns from which a little horn, a little horn which, which came up among the 10, 
and plucked out, Daniel said, three of the first horns. Specifically there, let's note the description that Daniel uses to describe the little horn there in the eighth verse. Daniel said that the little horn had eyes like the eyes of man and a mouth speaking pompous words. Again, what does this represent? Who is this little horn? The little horn is the Antichrist. That is the being, the Antichrist, who we find throughout scripture in the New Testament anyway, in Paul's writing, Paul wrote that the Antichrist will rise during the time period of the Great Tribulation. That is a period of time that occurs after the rapture of the church. The Antichrist, the Antichrist will rise, he will conquer kingdoms, and he will deceive a great many. Over in 2 Thessalonians, in the third, in the second chapter, I should say, and in the third and the fourth verse, also in the eighth verse there. I want to highlight there that the coming of the Antichrist is according to the working of Satan. With all power, signs, and lying wonders, the Antichrist, thinking about that name there, the Antichrist opposes Christ. The Antichrist opposes the Lord, opposes God's way, and will exalt himself to many, suggesting that, that he is greater than God, that he is greater than than Christ and he is going to again fool many he is going to deceive many and the antichrist will lead them into everlasting condemnation he's going to fool he's going to deceive and he's going to lead many to perish now when we get back over to the 7th chapter of Daniel and when we take a look at the 11th verse there in Daniel's vision he tells us there in that verse that he sees the antichrist speaking one with the pompous words, that's the Antichrist. Then Daniel said that he watched till the beast was slain. Talking again about the fourth beast. He is watching there as the, the body is being destroyed, as it is consumed, it is giving to the burning flame. So let's be very clear about what Daniel is witnessing there in this vision. Daniel, he's witnessing the, the judgment of the Antichrist. He's, which, he's witnessing the the final judgment of the Antichrist. So to reiterate here, this is a vision, right? This is a vision that I want you to understand. It stretches beyond us. It stretches beyond our time. We see that it is a vision that stretches beyond the rapture. It stretches even beyond the, the great tribulation as well. This again is a vision that stretches beyond the judgment seat of Christ because we are seeing a final judgment here of the Antichrist. We are seeing him being consumed by the eternal fire, the eternal fire of condemnation. This is a vision that stretches moments prior to what we see in the book of the Revelation of Christ, to where the lamb in the Revelation of Christ in the fifth chapter was moving to the throne. He was moving to take the scroll from the one that was sitting on the throne. Again, he was moving in the throne room. So this is a vision that stretches. It, it stretches again well beyond us. Now, when we take a look at the seventh chapter of Daniel there, when we take a look at the 13th verse, speaking again of the lamb, we'll see that Daniel, he then touches on the lamb. Daniel, he said that he beheld one like the son of man. Now, if you remember our lesson last week, you'll remember that, that uh, Nebuchadnezzar said that he, when he was taking a look at the young men in the, the fiery furnace, that he saw a fourth that, that looked like the son of, of God. And you may recall that I said, Nebuchadnezzar, he didn't really know what he was looking at. He, 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 he saw a heavenly being and he said, oh, it looks like the son of God. He didn't know. But again, Daniel, what he's telling us, we can take it for a fact. And there, again, the reason why we can take it for a fact is because again, he has been given this gift by, by the Lord. And so we can take Daniel's vision and his interpretation of this vision. We can take it for truth. Daniel, when he tells us that he saw again, the son of man, a title which Jesus used when, when he would go around and, and when he would speak, he would call, he would refer to himself 
as the son of man. We can take Daniel's word. We can take his, his interpretation of this vision. We can take it for, for truth. Daniel knew exactly who it was that he was seeing. So Daniel, he tells us there, he saw him, that is the son. He saw him coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the ancient of days and we're told there, Daniel said that they brought him near before him. This is again, a picture of what we see in the fifth chapter of the revelation of Christ, where the son of man, he was moving in the midst of the throne room. He was making his way to the father who was sitting on the throne, who had the scroll again, who it had been asked, who can open the scroll, who can loosen his seals. When we take a look at the 14th verse there, we're told that the ancient of days, that again is the father, gave to the son dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples and nations and languages should serve him. The dominion he gave to the son, scripture tells us there, Daniel tells us there, is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away nor be destroyed. The son, we should understand again, is going to return one day. And again, he is going to take his place. That's what we see in the fifth chapter of the revelation of Christ. That is what Daniel is seeing here as well to where the son of man, he was taking his place. He takes his place on the throne where he is going to one day, he's going to reign. He's going to reign over all things. That's shown to us throughout the book of the revelation of Christ again is why I highly suggest that you take a moment to, to read the book of the Revelation of Christ. Don't be afraid of reading the Revelation of Christ because again, we know one thing to be true. Christ, he is coming again. He said it himself that, that in his second coming, he's going to come in the clouds of heaven, in the clouds of glory, and he's going to set up a kingdom in this world. He is going to reign in this world for a thousand years. That's called the millennial kingdom to where all of those who are of faith will reign with him in this world. That, that's all of the Old Testament believers, the, the New Testament saints, that's us, the church. And then all of those tribulation saints, all of those who go through the, the great tribulation and they become believers, they will come through that tribulation. And when Christ, when he comes back and to this world and he set up his kingdom in this, in this world, they are going to reign with all of us as well. And then when that thousand years are up, Satan is going to make his last effort and he is going to be destroyed. He, along with the beast, along with the antichrist, along with all of those who are fully convicted of sin, they are going to be judged by the eternal fire of the Lord. They're going to be cast away from his presence for all of eternity and a new heaven and a new earth will come forth to where all of us will reign with Christ for everlasting life. Let me tell you something, Daniel's vision, what we see in the book of the revelation of Christ, it should fill you up with hope. It should fill all of us believers up with hope. Hope that this world is not our home. Some folks love living in this world, but I look at all the mess that's going on in the world today, and I would not want to live in this world for everlasting life. I am grateful that the Lord has prepared something new for us, something that will be without heartache, without pain, without suffering, without, without oppression, a new creation that, that will be without hatred, lies, and, and deception. I'm looking forward to that, a, a new, a new creation that will be without death, that will be without sorrow. I'm looking forward to that. And so Daniel's vision, it fills me up with hope. And then seeing the vision of Daniel and seeing how it's going to be fulfilled, shown to us in the revelation of Christ, it's already happened. All of us, the only thing that we are doing is making our way to what is shown to us in the revelation of Christ. That's something that I always love to point out because again, the vision has been seen of us already in heaven. And so all we have to do is make it there. And the way that we make it there is guess what? By faith. So again, let us move by faith. 
let us again see these visions. Let us be filled with hope. Let us trust in it being true. Let us trust in it being real. And let us walk in that faith to again be with our Lord for everlasting life. Hey there, thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. And if you have any questions, if you have any comments, don't be afraid to leave a question. Don't be afraid to leave a comment as well. And again, if you aren't doing so already, make sure that you're following the New Found Faith channel. Make sure you hit the alert bell so that you don't miss any of our wonderful videos that we have here on our YouTube page.